Chapter 2, Section 6, Storage Devices, by Matt Glover. Storage Devices Storage devices are used to store both the data that a computer system processes and the software programs that tell it how to process that data. They come in many different physical sizes, storage capacities, speeds at which data could be accessed, and the way that they store data, like temporary or volatile memory versus non-volatile or permanent memory. Primary storage. Primary storage refers to the high-speed electronic memory found inside a computer. It's a storage medium for data that is in active use, because unfortunately when the computer doesn't have power, the data is gone. It's the only storage that the processor can access directly because it's connected directly to the bus on the motherboard, which makes it much faster than secondary storage. One thing to note is that although hard disks are inside the computer system unit, they are still secondary stored because they're not directly connected to the processor. RAM versus ROM Random access memory, or RAM, is a temporary storage area for programs and data that are currently being used, so the user must save the data to a secondary storage device before turning the computer off. When programs or data are first needed, they are loaded from the RAM. The processor fetches the data and instructions from the RAM, executes them, and then saves everything back to the RAM. RAM exists in small amounts compared to their secondary storage alternatives because it only stores programs and data being used at the moment. Read-only memory, ROM, on the other hand, is a type of primary storage whose contents cannot be changed. Contents of ROM are programmed at the time of manufacture, which typically contains the BIOS or the basic input and output system software, which tells the computer how to boot, perform a soft check, and locate secondary storage devices. Then the operating system loads from secondary storage into RAM and starts up. Secondary storage. Secondary storage devices are used to store all the data and programs installed on a computer system. Any program or data that is run or used will be copied from secondary storage to primary storage before being executed. The benefit they have over primary storage is that they can save data and the user can access the data on them even after the power is shut off. While they're slower, secondary storage is much cheaper. Secondary storage also has a much larger storage capacity, with around 100 gigabytes to 2 terabytes for uh, the average storage capacity for secondary storage versus 1 gigabyte to 4 gigabyte for primary storage. Magnetic tapes. Magnetic tapes are a sequential storage medium used for data collection, backup, and archiving. Computer tape is made up of flexible plastic with one side coated with a ferromagnetic material. Tapes were originally open reels but were superseded by cartridges and cassettes of many sizes and shapes. A downside to the way that they're made is that they must be periodically recopied or their tightly coiled magnetic surfaces may contaminate each other. Magnetic tape comes in high capacity, which many organizations use to handle large amounts of data, but finding files is a daunting task because of the fact that they're sequential storage medium. So Magnetic disks. Magnetic hard disks are the most common type of secondary storage found in computers today. They consist of many disk platters spinning at up to 10,000 RPM inside a solid case. A read-write head moves backwards and forwards over the disk and magnetically charges areas of it to store data. Their high capacity, speed, and low price make them ideal for most PCs. On the other hand, they're very fragile and if the computer is merely bumped, the read-write head could damage or even destroy the disk surface. Hard disks are also very easily damaged by magnets because of the way that they're made. For all these reasons, many portable devices like MP3s and netbooks use solid state storage instead of hard magnetic hard disks. External hard disks. External hard disks are portable disks used for backups or transferring large files. External hard disks are literally internal hard disks on the inside with a solid casing on the outside to make them portable. The case allows the disk to connect to a computer or other device via USB, Firewire, or eSATA connector. It may also provide an additional USB cable or AC adapter for additional power if the unit needs one. These would usually be for external hard disks that require much more power in order to access the content and use the drive to read and write to it. Optical storage. Optical disks include CDs, DVDs, and Blu-ray disks, and they come in many varieties such as RW or RE, 
rewritable, and R, recordable. The earliest discs were ROM that allowed only reading of data from pre-recorded discs. Optical storage discs can be read and written to using a laser, and the different pits in the disc's surface reflect laser light that is interpreted as either a binary 1 or a 0 by the computer. The discs are very delicate, as small scratches on the surface can cause problems for the laser that reads them. Compact discs store between 650 megabytes to 750 megabytes. DVDs are 4.7 gigabytes in capacity, while dual layer DVDs, also known as DL DVDs, allow up to 8.5 gigabytes, and Blu ray discs can store between 25 and 50 gigabytes. Optical storage discs are sometimes used for creating backups, but they are becoming less useful in this manner because of the increasing storage capacity of external hard drives as a way of backup. CDs and DVDs are the most popular medium for software distribution, and Blu-ray are standard for high-definition films. So here's some more information on dual-layer discs. Dual-layer and double-layer DVDs are the same thing, and are also referred to as DVD-9 discs, and have a capacity of 8.5 GB, as previously mentioned. In dual-layer DVD-9 discs, two layers of standard DVD-5 are joined together with a transparent spacer and a thin reflector between the two. The bottom layer is read and written to in exactly the same manner as DVD-5. Reading and writing to the second layer is achieved by the laser focusing a fraction of a millimeter between the first recording layer. And another thing, a difference about uh, the dual layer discs versus the single layer is that dual layer discs are much more expensive. And in this diagram below, you can see on the left side is a standard uh, single layer 4.7 gigabyte disc, while on the right is a dual layer 8.5 gigabyte disc. Flash memory. Flash memory is a technology that stores data using electronic logic dates and has no moving parts, which is very advantageous. Flash storage devices are less susceptible to damage from drops and knocking around, making them great for portable computers. Because there's no moving parts, they use much less power than hard disks, which help to prolong the battery life on laptops, which could be especially useful in places where a charger cannot be used, like on an airplane or a train. They offer also they offer much faster access than hard disks and are useful for instant on devices which need to quickly load an operating system. Some examples of flash memory. The first example that I have is a USB drive, as you can see to the right. Um, one problem that a lot of people have is referring to it as a USB, and that doesn't uh, isn't a good name to call it because USB actually refers to the connection on the computer where you can connect uh, you can use the connection, the little port to connect mice or keyboard or any other peripherals but the best thing to call would be like a USB memory stick a USB, um, or like a USB flash drive any of those um, another example is, compa is compact flash card and that is the transcend compact flash 16 gigabyte card to the right and then some more are SD and micro SD cards as you can see below that's an adapter but and then there's a micro SD card the little one but that would function as a normal SD card when you put the micro SD card into that adapter. And there's many more examples such as iPods and other devices that use flash memory. Downside of flash memory. Flash memory devices are very expensive in price and have relatively low capacities. They're typically available in 64, 128, 256, and 512 gigabyte storage capacities. Now the price difference is a very big issue because you can get a 750 gigabyte hard disk drive for around 75 or less while a 512 gigabyte solid state drive would set you back around $400 so this is a very big deal but I feel that as they become the norm solid state drives will definitely decrease in price and increase in their storage capacity so that will be very useful and for the types of computers like the Chromebook that focus on solid state drive um, it has a very low capacity one but it focuses on the cloud services where you save your files to uh, the cloud server which is very useful because if you're using a computer or you're anywhere else you can access all your files um, anywhere else that you are. And here are the sources and credits. Creator of introduction and closing videos and PowerPoint presentation is me and Matt Glover. And then under that are the uh, links that I use for the information presented in this PowerPoint.